Last week, I published this post about using queries like automatic collections, giving three examples, and I asked if you wanted to see a video, and some people said yes, so I'm filming a video about it. So we'll go through each of them today, most of them actually being set up from scratch because I have a new demo space, and we're going to look at how we can fairly easily create these queries in just a couple of steps, but I'll explain the how and the why as we go so you can learn about queries and see how you can set them up for your own space as well. So as you can see, we're looking at creating an automatic red in 2024 list. We're looking for a list of meetings associated with a given project and an automatically updating video watch list. So let's dive in and look just at the books first. So in this demo space, I only have a media object type, but to go along with the post, we'll use the book template. So we're going to add that now. If you're somebody that does use a media object type, like I personally do, I did show you what to do in the post, which obviously I'll link in the description of this video. But anyway, back to the book. The book already comes with some properties, which is useful, and we need to add one more. And that's what this entire query will be based on. We're gonna add a date time property called finished on. That's all you need to do. It's set up and ready to use. Now, what this means is we can say we have read a book, say when we have finished it, and use a filter to look for all of the book objects read in a certain time frame. If that date property is empty, we assume the book hasn't been read, and we can use that for a reading list, which I'll show you as well. Now, this is what the book object type looks like. Obviously, there's not very much information, but that's okay, because we're just thinking about when something was finished. So, we say that a query collects content based on rules. So here, in this context, it means it's going to collect books based on the rules that we set. And the rules we want to set are books read in 2024. And the way that we do that is by creating a filter that is looking at the date in this property. So I click on filter and we want to look where finished on is on or before the 31st of December of this year and when it's after the 1st of January this year or on or after because obviously you might read a book on New Year's Day and we want that to be collected as well. So that's how we can assign a year date. Anything that was read at any point before 31st of December and at any point on or after the 1st of January of this year. And there we have the content that fits the rules that we have set. We have the books that fit this filter. But this is not a query, technically. This is just a filter. All we've done is applied it to this view right now. If I wanted to then look for things in 2023, I would change this and I would lose this view. So a query gives us the opportunity to save this view to come back to to use time and time again. So if I click save as query, we can see that those filters have kind of been saved and grouped together into this query and I can give it a title and an icon and it, up here it's pinned to our dashboard. That means two things. Number one, it means that it's nested within our book object type, which is useful because we'll probably come back to it a lot. And it also means that we have a whole new section here. So this is what I mean by it being saved for you to come back to. You can see all of your books, or you can see books based on this rule. And in your dashboard, which every object type has, you'll have a whole section here, which you can open as a whole page as well. So we can save that. But the reason I can call this somewhat of an automatic collection is because it's going to update as soon as another book matches the rules meaning it has a date in this property that's at some point in 2024. So let's say that I finish this book on Friday night. If I now open Red in 2024, there are two books. And that happened behind the scenes. 
and that's why it's an automatically updating kind of collection. So if I wanted to create one for 2023, I would just be tempted to do duplicate, change the date there, and then obviously change the filtered dates as well. So I'll just edit these dates and click update. And there's my one for 2023. And I'll pin that to my dashboard as well. So then the final one that we can do is to look for our reading list. So I'm going to create a new query by clicking on these three dots and clicking new query. And here, edit it to filter by properties where finished on is empty. There is nothing in that date property suggesting I haven't read it yet. And there's my reading list, which I will pin to my dashboard as well. So you can either create queries as I did here, where we apply the filter first and save it, or you can just click create new query and use that window that pops up in the middle. They're both doing the same thing. They're getting the same result, just different ways of doing it. So that's how we do it with a simple book object type and one property. Again, if you're using a media object type, not book object type, the filter that you need is in the article linked in the description below. So that's the reading list example. Let's have a look at how we create something like this, where we have an automatically updating list of any meetings associated with a given project. We're back in capacities. And the first thing I need to do is add the project object type. I'll use the template for this and I'll create a project called super exciting launch. And in order for the meetings and the projects, object types to talk to each other, yes, we could just link to a project here. But I think in this case, because we'd probably always want to know what project meetings we're part of, this is a great opportunity to add a property. Let me show you how to do it. I'm going to click add property, multi-select part of which projects. And make sure when you're creating select properties, that you choose precisely which object type you want to select from. I don't want to select from a tag, I want to select from a project and then click apply. Now in this meeting, I have the option to say that it's part of this super exciting launch and I can do the same with the second meeting as well. So in previous content, we've discussed how these project notes really can be like a hub that you work out of. And one way that you can make this really useful is just by putting everything that is related to a project right in its project page. I'll link to the power video, which talks about this in more depth, just so this video isn't half an hour long. But what we're going to do is create a query that looks for the meetings and then put it right in this project page. We can do all of this from the project page. So if I write forward slash query and I keep typing query meetings, at this point I can press enter. And then this shows me all the meetings that I have, but we want to apply some rules because we only want to see the meetings that are part of this specific project. So I'm going to click edit and I want to filter by properties with this so when you have a select property like this, this is how it looks. And this gives you the option to choose precisely which project. So once we've done that, that's all we need. And we click update and obviously it stays the same because of both of the meetings were part of it. But just to prove it updates automatically, if I remove that from meeting two, it's just meeting one there now. If I add it back in, I get my updated one. And right now you're probably looking at this exact screen thinking, well, what benefit does this here give us over these backlinks? And I think that's obviously a very fair question, but so far we've just kind of looked at a basic usage of a query where all we've done is filter it. We've created a rule to collect the content, but we can actually do more here. So for example, we could sort the meetings by the date that they occurred, probably by the newest first, so you always have your most relevant information. So if I shift click on this, I will edit the date to show you how it works. And let's say meeting two 
meeting one, sorry, was last week. So that's now in the right order. I can also choose how I want to view these. So I'll have them in a wall view like that. And crucially, because this is now a block in that project, you can move it around and we could create some columns and put the resources in one column and the meetings alongside it. And we can use the wide layout to make that look a bit less squished. And you can then just nest some thoughts about it below. And of course, you can always change this, update this, add more filters, completely up to you. And this just gives you kind of more flexibility than what you'll have here because your backlinks are going to get a lot busier. Projects are related to so much of your work. It probably is the context for why you're doing what you're doing. So you can imagine that a lot of backlinks will occur here and that's great. But what we can do is take out specific ones and put them into your project object, move it around, change the settings whenever you need without having to touch your backlinks so they stay useful for their own reasons but you can zoom in just on your project meetings here so that was the second example let's move on to the final one looking at how we can create a video watch list so this is using our web extension if you haven't already got that installed i will link to the relevant video that shows you how to do that and you just need to save some links to some videos so this is a good time to show you our community picks section, which has some videos. So I've opened the web extension. You want to make sure that you're choosing the right space. And then we're going to add two tags. I know for a fact that these tags don't exist in this space because I only created it today. So what that's going to mean here is Capacities tries to find them. It can't find them. It will create these for you and to tell capacities we want them to be two separate tags you just need to separate them with a comma i don't feel the need to add any notes so i'm just going to click save to capacities we've done the same for meg's video and now i'm back in capacities you can see that a web link object has been created because i didn't have one before and there are two items in there both of which have the same tags so here are the web links and now to find the things I just want to watch, I'm going to click on that tag and I'm going to create a query that looks just for this tag. I'm going to call it watch list and we need to make sure that the only things that show up here are things also tagged with video. So I'm going to click edit, filter by properties and say where tags includes video and click update. So if I then remove video from here, that goes away because the video is no longer found. Equally, if I create a new media called Barbie and say I want to watch it, but it's a film and therefore not a video, this isn't going to update because it's looking for video and to watch. But if I add video back here and then open that watch list query, it's come back. So add to watch to anything that you want to watch, tag it with its type and this is the query that we use to create that automatically updating watch list. And of course, once you have watched something, the video tag can stay, but if you remove to watch, that also goes away. But you've obviously still got the web link, so you can take notes on the video right in capacities where you're watching the YouTube video as well. So that's an in-depth look in how to create each of those queries. I hope that it was helpful. If you have any queries you're struggling to create or you'd like any further advice on it, just let us know in the comments below and we'll do our best to help. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video.